In this video, we'll discuss where the Internet of Things might be going in the future. Hopefully we'll provide you with a bit of info to excite you on the upcoming possibilities and ways you might be able to expand your IoT environment even further. The Internet of Things ecosystem is an ever-changing one. Right now, it's a big battle between many big tech companies and small startups, all attempting to become the center of the IoT space. Google, Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Intel are all looking to get into the game. It's a messy IoT world at the moment. While it's totally possible a small unknown company might end up dominating, I think the big companies with a lot of money and resources are going to end up sharing the IoT landscape. So I'll cover where the major movement and resources might be moving towards, hopefully as a guide to where to keep your developer eyes watching over the next few years. We'll start with Google. In January 2014, they acquired Nest, a company that was producing internet-connected thermostats, and were beginning to produce smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. This may have seemed like an odd purchase to some, but it was Google's big first step into developing the company into a home automation one. In June 2014, Nest bought startup Dropcam, who developed Wi-Fi video streaming cameras through a cloud-based service. They've integrated that into their thermostat and smoke detector ecosystem, and many predict that Google will continue expanding the Nest ecosystem into a cloud-based IoT platform. Their developer page at developer.nest.com definitely shows they're making huge steps already in the area of building an IoT platform. They've got connectivity with the up wristband so that the thermostat can start to adjust the temperature when the up wristband detects someone has woken up. They've got connectivity with Whirlpool washing machines to know when you're home or not and decide on the wash cycle. They've got connectivity to Ratio sprinkler systems to set off sprinklers in your yard if there's a fire detected in the house. It's even compatible with IFTTT, which means almost anything can be connected and work with the Nest platform. The Ninja Sphere advertises that it supports both the Nest and Dropcam, so even other IoT ecosystems seem poised to welcome the Nest and accompanying devices into their hubs. This is definitely technology to watch in the IoT space. I'm in Australia, and it doesn't currently ship here, so I'm waiting eagerly for when it's released locally. I guess one of the downsides of having a thermostat as your IoT hub is that regulations across different countries for that sort of device can cause pretty big issues. For eager JavaScript developers with access to a Nest, the Nest does have sample JavaScript code, and you very well should be able to integrate the Nest into the IoT dashboard that we develop in this course. One example I found was at developer.nest.com forward slash documentation forward slash cloud forward slash control. On to Samsung, Samsung announced in August 2014 that they'd purchased SmartThings, another home automation hub similar to NinjaBlocks and the NinjaSphere. Samsung plans on building an ecosystem of smart lights, locks, TVs, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, stereos, and more, all through the SmartThings technology, so it's definitely one to watch. may become a very good piece of technology, a very good ecosystem for developers to start working in. Apple have released a framework as well for iOS 8 called HomeKit, which aims to connect devices in a user's home, turn on lights, open garage doors. It even plans to allow you to trigger user actions via Siri, so they're really trying to build their own expanded Apple ecosystem into the home. Microsoft are also developing their own platform for the IoT that developers work with using Win32 programming and Visual Studio. It's an option for developers used to this ecosystem. Microsoft and LG announced a partnership to develop IoT devices, so they've kind of got a bit of progress there. Microsoft appears to be more focused in their developer advertising on connecting up Intel Galileo boards, which are Arduino-compatible development boards. The Intel Galileo boards are Intel's way of getting involved. Their boards are Arduino compatible and even Arduino certified. You can even see them on the Arduino website itself. They'll work with all the Arduino stuff that you'll learn to do in this course. And it's similar to the Arduino Yun in that it has Linux firmware allowing you to run a web server and such as well. The Linux install can also run Node, so JavaScript developers have options here. Another big thing that I've come across is the All Scene Alliance. Microsoft, LG, Panasonic, Sony, Sharp, and many other big companies have all joined forces in the All Scene Alliance. They are a nonprofit consortium launched in December 2013 and have developed an open source software framework called AllJoin that IoT devices can connect to and exchange information on together. It's a pretty notable goal. Uh, the AllJoin framework will be installed with Windows 10, so the potential for many more devices to connect up to this framework so they can claim Windows 10 compatibility alone might be really, really huge. 
definitely something to keep an eye on. Really hoping that if this does grow and expand, that it's an encouragement for all IoT device manufacturers to agree to a standard so that every IoT device can connect and talk to every other one in a relatively easy and simple way to manage. The Internet of Things is also set to get more exciting with the emergence of virtual reality and augmented reality technologies. Virtual reality is where your entire field of view is taken up by a virtual world, whilst augmented reality allows you to see the world around you and adds interfaces and elements to your vision. We'll be able to see web data in entirely new ways via this technology, and it has the potential to enhance the way we interact with our devices. In the world of VR, the biggest player at the moment is Oculus with their virtual reality glasses. Facebook have seen the potential for VR to become a new way we interact with the web and technology and announced that they were purchasing Oculus in March. Whilst the Oculus' current focus is on gaming, the look to the future clearly involves taking it further. Uh, imagine viewing and interacting with our IoT data in a virtual space, or even being able to virtually roam your home to check everything is okay while you're away. I mean, you can have a small drone, for example, that you could remotely fly around above your house to see everything via virtual reality. Virtual reality is an entirely new level of internet-enabled device that could have a huge potential that we haven't even seen the start of yet. It's one of those things where you're not going to know the absolutely incredible, brilliant idea that's going to come out of it until it happens. In augmented reality, we've got devices like Metaglasses, which I'm a huge fan of, Microsoft's HoloLens, and the ever-so-secretive Magic Leap, which can complement our day-to-day -day reality with web-enabled holographic-style experiences. It is very cool technology that I cannot wait to see progress even further. I think it's a really good area that technology is moving towards. That concludes our video on where the Internet of Things is heading. The world of devices and ecosystems in the Internet of Things right now is only just beginning, and it's anyone's guess as to where we'll be in a few years' time. 